Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I'm here with my January book haul. So I talked about my goals, how I was going to approach like an idea about how I was going to approach book hauls this year and I don't remember if I mentioned this in the video but that was very open to change and it has already changed. Um, I just like I don't want it to be so restrictive that I just give up um, which I'm a little worried is going to happen. I've mentioned this before with other things I've tried to do um, where I can there are certain kinds of goals I can be very all or nothing and I don't want that to happen. Um, so I think kind of what I'm doing right now instead is looking at like actually counting and tracking the physical TBR books I get off my TBR in a month versus what comes in. I saw Mara from Books Like Woe do one of her book hauls where she actually like mentioned this at the end of the book haul, like she tracked that, and I'm gonna try that instead. We're gonna see how that works. Um, again, I'm still figuring out what I'm doing, so subject to change, um, but I do want to be more accountable with my book hauls this year, and um, I do enjoy doing them. I think they're fun videos, and I do think they're helpful, like seeing why somebody has picked a book up. Also, as usual, I want to mention a few of the like donations or funds um, that I like connected my book hauls to th these last few months. Um, I'm gonna mention a few because obviously I haven't been doing book hauls very regularly and as I always say my friend Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly is the one where like who gave me this idea um, and I just think that's a nice thing to keep in mind. I'm not like mentioning these things to like give myself a pat on the back or anything. I just think um, like I really appreciated seeing Kelly do that because it gave me this idea. I just find this helpful to connect like my reading with other things going on in the world. Um, so I that's one of the reasons I like doing this. So um, this was the first month that I did the like Give Lively or the uh, Giving Basket. If you guys use Charity Navigator, um, they've now made it even easier to donate to multiple places at once. So a few of the ones that I've been doing recently um, are Global Giving and Direct Relief. Um, I believe this was for COVID-19 relief and just like healthcare in general. Um, and they're, they're obviously both very highly rated and they do a lot of like direct work, I think, and like with local local communities. The Heifer Project is another one that's really good and also the Equal Justice Initiative. I did these in February, um, which was the month that I was reading Just Mercy and like obviously you don't have to read that book to know they're doing amazing work. This was a good reminder for myself um, to kind of like keep them in mind when I'm thinking about um, these kinds of things. So I will put all those links in the description and let's go ahead and get started. Um, starting off with some used books that I picked up. Um, I have Sherwood and Robin and the King Oops. Um, by Parker Godwin and I actually was recommended these by I think it was Margaret Pinard, I'm pretty sure. She mentioned that she really enjoyed these. This is I think her favorite um, Robin Hood retelling. I have been really into those so um, when I found good used copies I went ahead and picked these up. They're very hard to find now so I was glad to get those. Um, I also picked up a couple of Georgette Heyer books, one of which you have already heard me talk about, um, and that is The Quiet Gentleman by Georgette Heyer, so I won't get into this one because um, I talked about it in a recent wrap-up. I'll link that below, but I really enjoyed this. Um, and then the other one I picked up is Sylvester or The Wicked Uncle by Georgette Heyer. Okay, so here's what like hooked me, like just the back sounds really fun. Sylvester, Duke of Salford, has, exact has exacting requirements for a bride. Then he encounters Phoebe Marlowe, a young lady with literary aspirations, and suddenly life becomes very complicated. She meets none of his criteria, and even worse, she has written a novel that is sweeping through the ton and causing all kinds of gossip, and he's the main character. I just think that sounds really fun. I like the idea of him being like so certain about what he wants in a woman, and then other things happen. Um, I just think that sounds really fun, so I'm excited to get to that one. I know this is ridiculous, but I actually feel out of practice at doing book hauls, because <laughs> I did my Christmas one, or like Christmas in December, but other than that, I really haven't done many recently, so... Um, I have no idea how much detail is an appropriate amount to give anymore. <laughs> um, then I have a couple of other, these are nonfiction books. This one is With Roots in Heaven, One Woman's Passionate Journey into the Heart of Her Faith by Rabbi Tirza Firestone. Um, and actually this one and the next one, which I have here, Life on the Fringes, A Feminist Journey Toward Traditional Rabbinic Ordination by Haviva Ner David. Um, both of these were actually, I think, recommendations, at least one of them was. I think both of them were recommendations from um, Hannah's books. Like she talked about them like um, she started reading them a while back and wasn't able to finish, but she was really enjoying them. And um, I think this kind of nonfiction is really interesting. I also like reading about different religious traditions. So um, I thought these both sounded really good. So I picked up used copies of these as well. These are also ones that are very hard to find like in print. I also picked up a copy of O Pioneers by Willa Cather. Um, this is an author I've been wanting to try for a little while, but my friend Kier from Kier the Scrivener, she recently did a video talking about how she went into, I think it was this specific book, thinking she was gonna hate it and she actually really enjoyed it so um, that's encouraging and I also like this edition. Um, it's set in, it's like a classic that is set in I think like the plains of Nebraska it looks like um, and it's about a young woman who is managing her family's farm instead of her older brothers um, and then how they 
I think they try and take the farm back from her. They're like, we're tired of you being in charge. We're going to do it. And she's like, well, I'm really good at it though. Um, so I think it's kind of a like proto-feminist classic, which is always something I enjoy. And I'm really interested to see how that goes. I also picked up Renaissance and other poems by Edna St. Vincent Millay. Um, this is a really short poetry collection and I think I've seen some of her poems before that I really liked but what kind of reminded me that I wanted to read more from her is Allie from Allie with Books was comparing these poems to one of the books, I think it was one of the books they'd read recently and really enjoyed um, that I had also enjoyed. I'll like link the video if I can find it um, but that's what kind of reminded me I wanted to read more of these. So this is like kind of a lot of recommendations in this book haul so excited for that. And then I think the last of the used books is Spiritual Letters by Sister Wendy Beckett. She's since passed away in the last few years. This is a collection of her letters that I, again, I think I've seen excerpts from or I read reviews of, and I've just always thought I would really like it. But her books are very inconsistent in terms of what's in print or out of print. So she's another author where like if I see a decent copy of her books, like one of her books that I want to read, then I like snatch it up. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. And now moving into the new books that I got. Um, one of them is from a book box and I, like you guys know, I, I don't do book boxes very often, but once in a while I'll get a fake crate box. Um, and this was one of those and it's a book that like I had kind of had on my radar but it wasn't until I heard some like specific really good reviews that I was like no I think I want to try it um, and I saw that they had this I think this was the one where one of the like they had like different like fandom items and everything and I think one of them was for Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge which I love Rosamund Hodge and there's not a lot of fandom stuff for her work so that was another reason I wanted it and there were a few other things as well but the book is the main thing and that is Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. Um, I actually don't like the special edition cover I like the turquoise one a lot better, so that's a bummer. <laughs> um, but I am excited for this book. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre um, that I believe is set in Ethiopia or it incorporates kind of Ethiopian um, like ideas or storytelling and I've heard pretty good things about it and I have a theory that Jane Eyre is going to be one of those stories where I hate the original but I like retellings. I don't know why, I just feel like that's gonna happen. So um, hopefully I enjoy this one, but I've heard really good things. I've heard the atmosphere is great and the characters are also really interesting. And like I said, I feel like this is gonna change things about the original that I would like to see changed. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. Another book by Sister Wendy Beckett. This one is a new copy, obviously. I told you it's like very inconsistent <laughs> which of her books are still in print. Um, and that is Joy Lasts on the Spiritual and Art. And this is like a really, really short book um, that I think is just about, I think it's about like what spiritual art is and isn't and um, she has actually, it's funny because she's really well known for obviously being a nun who talks about art and art history a lot and art appreciation and so much to many people's surprise she says that she has always had a difficulty in talking about religious art and people are like how can like how can you say that you're into art and you're a religious sister um so i'm just really interested to see what she says about it it says that um, she discusses 14 other works of art as she seeks to understand the nature of religious and of spiritual art which are not the same but are often mistaken for each other and i think it talks just about like our responses to paintings as well like why like trying to explain why it is that certain ones move us so much so i just think this sounds really really good i also got the paperback copy of i'll be the one by lila lee i think this was originally supposed to come out like in December or November. I've been waiting for the paperback um, and even before that I kept waiting for a paperback edition to come out and it finally has and this is a contemporary romance that um, follows a plus-sized girl who um, she I think is part of a k-pop competition and she like really nails her audition and she's really excited and um, I think it's about how like there's not really a lot of body diversity in k-pop and um i just have heard that this is really fun really like light but also it has that important topic as well and i've heard the romance is really cute so i'm excited for this i've heard good things also this is just like the sunshiniest most wonderful cover and i love it i have a few nonfiction books here this one is dress coats how the laws of fashion made history by richard thompson ford this is another pre-order of a paperback edition um this is quite a chunky one and i heard about this from mara at books like whoa and i really really love nonfiction that talks about like like fashion and like fashion history and cosmetics and um, basically like the historical and political and social importance of things like fashion and like I just find that fascinating. I really love reading about it so this sounds right up my alley um, and I think this is going to focus a lot on obviously it says how the laws of fashion made history so like how rules and regulations associated with fashion um they they weren't just controlling people's clothes they had like um historical importance as well so i think that sounds fascinating so i'm really excited for that 
I also have Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price, PhD. So I guess Dr. Devin Price, I should say. Um, and I have heard fantastic things about this. There are several books in this kind of like capitalism making people feel like they're worthless because they're not doing enough <laughs> kind of subgenre. Um, and basically how we have made up the concept of laziness. And I am really excited for this. My friend Mariana from Mariana Mas Books has really, really loved this one. So I think this sounds really fantastic. I'm very excited to get to it. I think a lot of us need a book like this. So I'm looking forward to it. I also have Lifting As We Climb, Black Women's Battle for the Ballot Box by Yvette Dion. And this is a fairly short book, but it's about black women fighting for the right to vote. Um, I have been reading a lot of nonfiction about the women's suffrage movement in the US. And I think it's especially important that we're starting to see more I guess like popular nonfiction about the women of color and their specific um, experiences within the women's suffrage movement because it absolutely had a racism problem and um, I just think this sounds really fantastic. It also was an honor for the Coretta Scott King Award for nonviolent for nonviolent social change. Um, so that's really encouraging as well. And I just really look, looking forward to getting to this one. And then finally, I think this is the last book I have in this haul. It took me a while to <laughs> collect all of these. So hopefully I haven't miss, missed anything. Um, but I have Serendipity, 10 Romantic Tropes Transformed, edited by Marissa Meyer. Um, this is one of my most anticipated releases that I talked about. Probably a couple of these were actually. I can't remember. Um, but I am just really excited for this. This is Marissa Meyer's first collection that she's edited and it's based on like each author writes a story about a different romantic trope, kind of like focusing on a different romantic trope and using them I think in interesting ways. Um, yeah, so I really like Marissa Meyer. It also has Anna Marie McMore, whom I love, um, and Julie Murphy. I've liked some of her stuff and then like several authors who I haven't read yet but I really want to try. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so that was my January book haul. I kept track and I have brought 17 books onto my physical TBR, but in the month of January, I read 13 books and got those off my physical TBR. So I'm still four books behind, but those numbers are a lot closer than I was concerned about. Um, obviously the goal is to be reading more than I get, um, but I think for like the first month tracking this, I think that's pretty good. Um, so I'm really, really excited for that, especially because February, I did a lot of pre-ordering. Um, so I'm gonna we're gonna see how I do as the year goes on but I'm pretty happy for this. Um, please comment down below and let me know if you have read and enjoyed any of these or a book that you're really excited to read. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!